Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Josh. Hi. Now, you guys recently went down to the uh, Horizon Indoor thing. It seems to be a Columbus. yearly tradition. Ever yeah. since before Flight Test, uh, probably about seven years now, we've been going to the indoor flying at Horizon. Mm -hmm. It was previously known as the JR Indoor. Yeah. And every year it gets cooler with more cool things. Awesome. And you met up with Jason Ubrig yep. and uh, CJ Corella. Yep. And uh, I actually met Jason at uh, Flight Fest. He's a cool guy. He's an amazing guy. He's been around from Flight Test ever since the very beginning. Yeah. And he's also an amazing designer too. Yeah, so Jason designed like uh, his own version of, uh, it was kind of inspired by Aaron Bates' uh, Honey Badger. It was very inspired by it. Matter of fact, he named it the uh, Super, Super Honey, Honey Hawk. Super Honey Hawk. Yeah. Now, if you guys haven't seen the uh, Super Honey Badger, Aaron Bates is also another an amazing designer and he goes big and he goes crazy yeah uh, to say this guy's like a mad scientist with big gas planes doesn't do it justice but he designed a super honey badger which is a plane that has a tail rotor on it to give it super yaw authority to do crazy things like pinwheels and uh is that the little uh, propeller yeah in the, in the hip section of the plane exactly exactly it points the other way that's the tail rotor yep it actually okay. takes the yaw authority and it actually powers the yaw authority <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We do a lot of that with differential thrust, mm -hmm. but on a 3D airplane with only one engine, you can't do that. So he took a big uh, carbon fiber tube, put a tail rotor on it, yep. and then chopped the fuselages to bits, and also did some really advanced mixing to make a 100cc size amazing plane. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> That's amazing. Jason made like the, the foam version of it. Yeah. Smaller. Jason took that. He also very much simplified it too. Yeah. And he, instead of using a torque tube that went to a constant RPM running motor that would deflect the thrust, he actually took a uh, special mixing for a lot of the aerobatic quads where it will actually reverse the motor and okay. then cut down a prop to make it work. Oh, nice. So it's uh, two speed controllers, one for the front motor, one for the back motor. Um, this one doesn't power anything. It just drives the, the back motor and a uh, little multi-rotor motor, 1306 DYS motor with uh, a Blade 200 QX prop cut down. And now you can reverse that, just like on the, uh, the aerobatic version, right? Fly direction, go ahead. So switch down, pull rotor and rudder, and then switch up, just have rudder, just like no more airplane. That's awesome. Well, I gotta see this thing fly. So to get to see the CJ take this up in the air was amazing. Yeah. Uh, to see the pinwheels that he was doing where he would go from hover to pinwheel to hover looked just like Aaron Bates's. That's cool. And all, he's also doing things like blenders and flat spins and stuff like that. Now Aaron had some very advanced mixing on his wing that gave him the ability to roll against torque and do some other crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very similar and very simple, which is really cool. <laughs> So all those batteries are good. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you get a chance to crash or fly it? I got a chance to do both, yes. Oh, okay. uh, a matter of fact, uh, one thing that uh, um, Jason designed this around was to be able to be hit. And the way he 3 d printed the parts was the carbon fiber rods would slip on an impact. Okay. And so for some reason, I think he wanted me to stress test it. He let me take it up in the air. <laughs> I love it, it's just a blast, man. You know what I'm saying? It's CPC. Get some deep and foam pack and reach it up. Had a great time trying to do, uh, trying to do pinwheel to hovers and got a couple of them down, but of course it ended with me crashing to the yeah. ground. There we go. There's my crash again. Oh, the wheel <laughs> <laughs> Everything has to end with a 3D with me crashing it. He's very patient with me that way.
Now the neat thing, just a little bit of bending, the carbon fiber tube slide back, goes nice and true. And also with the EPP, a little bit of foam pack, about 20 minutes, it's good as new. Great. Here's an example of what happens with EPP. See like that? That's a two minute fix. Little beacon foam tack and it's back. It'll, it'll look, in fact, this side here looks just like that, but it's been glued and it's solid as ever. The foam tack's amazing stuff. Oh, it is. It's great. The best part about this plane is I love, you'd think it'd be really difficult to fly with the tail rotor, like how it's completely different, but it actually really is, you know. Yeah. It's no, pretty it's easy to pick up on. Yeah, and I like the fact, even with all the modifications, once you tear it off, it flies like a typical three year. Exactly. Well, and it's a docile for the airplane. It really is. Like it's got a huge flight on it. You had to do a lot of 3D printed parts in this, didn't you? Yeah, well, the motor mine I printed for the original Fat Hawk design, but I added um, braces basically. Okay. 3D braces, I injected, stuck them into the foam, and these carbon rods are just press fit into, one, into the holes that I, that I designed in there. So that as the tail, if, okay, you, we'll if you doink it, if you crash it, it will just shift. If you just straighten them up, and away you go again. And then the uh, tail motor mount is the same as the front, but the design I just, in the CAD in SketchUp, I just cut two arms off. So the pins you'll see, just align it like that, and then on the bottom, I've got a, a flat carbon rod that connects the front and back spars. And that gives it rigidity to this one. Exactly. Well, this foam here, you can see on this piece here how flimsy that is, right? Yeah. So that allows the tail motor to push and torque and not fall off. What a simple, easy design, but at the same time, it's, it just works fantastic. Yeah. Well, when somebody's flying, it knows how to fly. <laughs> Now, he's gonna have some kits available, right? Yeah, a matter of fact, uh, it's West Michigan Park Flyers approached him immediately and they wanna work on making a kit for this nice. and distributing it. So we'll have links below that will have this. It's not gonna happen overnight, mm -hmm. but the neat thing about Jason is he uh, he believed he designed the Fat Hawk, which he converted into the Super Honey Hawk. Okay. And we'll have a link down below. It's an EPP foamy airplane, incredibly easy to fly, incredibly durable. But we'll have a link below there to his free plan so you can download it. If you wanna build the Fat Hawk right now, you can do so, and then maybe later on there'll be STL files and things like that, so you can even scratch build the Honey Hawk. Great. And I wanna encourage you guys, we're just eight folks here designing planes. We have a community of over 350,000 subscribers, and if you're not a subscriber, I'd encourage you to do so. But if you have a crazy design, crazy idea, go to flighttest.com slash articles, post it. We get a lot of inspiration, and we'd love the opportunity to showcase your crazy, unique ideas. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.